Hi, my name is Ray and welcome to Bookmark Chronicles. Today I want to talk about John Green and more specifically why I don't really enjoy any of his books. I know that's going to be surprising for some people. I know there's tons of people out there who are super huge fans, love everything he writes, and that's cool. Like, have a different opinion from me and tell me about it that is totally fine but don't try to come for me because at the end of the day my opinion is going to stay the same and i assume that yours will too but if you want to tell me why you like his book so much please feel free to do so especially the ones that i have not read so i haven't read turtles all the way down or an abundance of Catherine's. i think the other one is called um so let me know how those are if you like them i did hear really good things about turtles all the way down but i i don't plan to read it so let me know what you thought so one of the reasons that I, well, the main reason that I don't like John Green is because I find his stories really anticlimactic. I feel like I'm always waiting for something to happen. I think something's going to happen and then it's over. And then I just feel like I wasted my time. I'm a sucker for a good plot twist. So I always appreciate when there's something crazy happening. And even when I was reading romance at the time, and, and I fault myself for this. I was reading a lot of Nicholas Sparks. Almost everybody dies. So that was kind of my expectation for any romance book that I read. There was always going to be something crazy. The first book that I read by him was The Fault in Our Stars. And at the time that I read it, I liked it. It was okay. It wasn't great, but I liked it. It was cute. Like I said, I was into romance. So it was like a cute summary read. And then the movie came out and my sister and I went to see it together. We enjoyed it. We cried. Cool. Whatever. Then I went back to school and it was all that anybody was talking about to the point where I just got sick of it. I just got tired of hearing it and looking back I, I honestly think it is overrated. If you have not read the book yet and you plan to or you want to watch the movie I suggest you skip ahead a little bit for now because I'm gonna get into a little bit of spoilers. So in regards to me feeling like John Green is anticlimactic, in The Fault in Our Stars, the like turning point in the story is just that Gus dies before Hazel, which, and I'm not trying to sound like cold or narcissistic or anything, but we knew they both were going to die. It's not a surprise. And I just, I didn't think that, I don't know. I just, I thought I expected more to happen. And I do understand that for Hazel, that is something that she is going to have to recover from and she's going to have to grow and that'll be like her character arc, but we don't get any of that. Like Gus dies and the story's basically over. And like, I guess he brought her out of her shell and everything, but that was about it. And if we're being honest, there is nothing special about the word okay. Stop saying it. It's not cute. The second book that I read by John Green was Paper Towns. <sighs> I, I I might hate this more than The Fault in Our Stars, to be honest. Um, yeah, I just it, it it was it was completely pointless to me. And I also watched the movie, and that was also pointless. Um, I will say that John Green has the ability to write some interesting characters, but at the same time, some of them are just really fucking annoying. Like the uh ben in this story i think his name is the one that calls everybody honey bunny that shit's fucking weird don't do it it's not cute and then radar and his parents have the largest collection of black santas that was odd just really odd um and at the end of the day when i got to the end of the book i was kind of just like mm, what did we do all this for what did we cause all this ruckus for because no nothing happened literally nothing happened again if you have not read this book yet and you want to skip ahead because spoiler basically the premise of paper towns is that quentin is obsessed with margot in a weird way like it's not cute we need to stop romanticizing things that are weird and um he he goes on this trip to find her when she didn't want to be found in the first place so like literally we get to the end of the book and she's like what the fuck are you doing here you skipped graduation scared the shit out of your parents and dragged your friends on a cross-country road trip for what for nothing and i know that technically margo is at fault because she's the one that left clues for him which was weird especially if you didn't want to be found and on top of that um 
there is that one part where uh he was worried that she was gonna harm herself i get that 100 percent. but why throw that little point in there and have him freak the fuck out just for her to be like what do you want why are you here why are you interrupting my day no that that that, that whole story just it didn't work out for me it didn't work out the last book is Looking for Alaska, and I actually dislike this one so much that I DNF'd. This was the first or second time that I had ever DNF'd, and I don't regret it because I looked it up to see what would happen, and it sounds stupid. Also, from the beginning, I don't even remember the main character's name, I don't really care, but he meets Alaska and immediately he starts sexualizing her not okay not a fan don't do it this is weird i was already uncomfortable reading that book if you have not read it and you want to skip ahead because spoilers when the title of the book is looking for alaska and you kill alaska before we even make it halfway through the book i don't care anymore i literally stopped caring at that point because alaska was the only character that i actually cared about I just want to add really quickly that I do know that it was never determined if Alaska's death was a suicide or an accident and I feel for her I do the part about her forgetting her mom's birthday that I felt that but the rest of the story just ugh, did not make sense for me and once that happened I just stopped reading I didn't care anymore I wasn't into it and so I looked up how it ended and correct me if I'm wrong, if you have read it, tell me exactly what the point of the book is. Because I know that like people get together, like the, who is it? Like the one group and the weekend warriors or whatever they're called, they get together and they do something, right? If I'm not mistaken, I am 100% sure that I read somewhere that the point of the story was that the main character forgives Alaska for dying. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I am pretty sure I read that somewhere. Also, I don't know why Hulu made this a TV show. I thought about watching it, but I, I feel like it would be like the book and I wouldn't be able to make it through. So if you have watched it, tell me how it is. Tell me if it's better than the book, if it stays true to the book or what, because I saw that. I logged into Hulu one day and I was literally shocked. And then I rolled my eyes and looked for whatever I was looking for. If I were going to give John Green a rating as I do books, I'd probably give him a two. And that's really only because I actually managed to complete a few of his books. Well, two, really. But, yeah. I just, I can't. I can't. I just don't like John Green. I'm sorry. Actually, I'm not. I take that back. Eh, it's fine. But anyway, that's all I have for today. Uh, let me know your opinions on John Green. Let me know about the books that you've read the ones that I have not read, and if you've seen any of the movies or the Looking for Alaska TV show, I am curious about that one. Um, I doubt that I would like it, so I'm not even gonna bother, to be honest. But that's all I have. I'll see you in the next video.